you know, I don't know how many people have a, a diagnostic, uh, an OBD2 scanner. I use one that's on my iPhone. They, I find it to be really convenient. I got the sunshine behind me. I don't think you can read this. Hold on one second here as I maneuver around while I'm driving. We're not supposed to have our cell phone, but technically this is my camcorder. So, let me see if I can get that in there. The, uh, these are really neat. The, uh, I've got it, you can program it for anything. Right now we're looking at uh, the speed. Got the RPM up in the corner up here. I'm going to move it really close so you can see it. Okay, shift. Um, can you see that thing? It says 2000 RPM right now, I think. I'm in fourth gear. Uh -uh. Maybe this doesn't work as good as I hoped it would be. Oh, there, maybe that's the angle I needed right there. Now I can see. So, uh, we're in fourth gear at 2100 RPM, 37 miles an hour. You can see that we're doing that on the actual speedometer above it. Timing is at 32 degrees. The vacuum is at the bottom down there in the yellow stripe. You know, we're reading the valley about eight, I think. And then uh, we're using seven horsepower and 17 foot pounds of torque. And uh, that'd probably be, uh, that's 35 miles an hour driving through town. We are curious. If you have a 96 or later Metro, all this data can be had uh, through your uh, onboard diagnostic plug. And you can download an app off the iPhone app. I'm sure you can do it on the other the app uh, operating systems as well. But it's kind of neat to see it uh, driving. And I can just stop here and uh, let's see how everything drops down. Except for I have to turn, so... <laughs> this is a terrible video. Uh, let's see if I can block the sun out. So as we come down to zero, we're using two horsepower. Ignition timing's at 10, 8, there we go. And the uh, base timing set at 5. And so we're at 8 right now because we're running. Uh, we're using uh, 13 uh, foot-pounds of torque is what it says it's taking to produce this idle speed at 2 horsepower. And then uh, the vacuum's right on the button right there at about, uh, I guess it's probably about 9, I would imagine. And we're at 800. And then you can see this car runs perfect, well, mostly because it's just been gone through. But we're chasing like 850 RPM, and it doesn't blocks of 50. And you can see the RPM right there, and it'll just kind of bounce up and down, about 50 RPM-ish. Just up and down, and uh, let me put the brake on here. Um, make sure it's out of gear. I guess it's not out of gear. The, uh, let me shade the sun there. So, now it'll find idle again. You can see how everything's consistent. And if you ever wonder, like, if your oxygen sensor is working correctly, I believe here, I've got my glove on. This is fuel economy. But this isn't just this car right here. The, uh, I didn't reset it, so all the cars I've been test driving look like they're averaging about 47 miles to the gallon. And, uh, but that is real flow rate right there. In idle, you're using 0.1 gallons per hour. That's a real number over here. And uh, let me see, I think we're set up for a three cylinder. Yes, I do. My gloves will work. The wipers work. There we go. And uh, we won't have anything until we drive again. Yeah, let me see. What I was looking for is the oxygen sensor. Um, you get a lot of neat information, though, if you're on a trip. Um, like there, you've got uh, 3.1 fuel gallons of fuel consumed. Um, I've got the cost of fuel put in there from, I don't know, I probably put that in two or three years ago. And then, uh, I don't know why it doesn't reset the fuel economy there. Maybe we have to drive it. I'm not sure how it comes up with that. And uh, we're getting a CO2 on it. The, uh, it's got a lot of great uh, 
a lot of great uh, data. Um, yeah, see this part's not reset. This is another car that I was driving because um, it says 141.6 miles on it. But it's a neat app. It's uh, called Command. It's right up there in the corner. I really like it, Dash Command. And what I was really looking for is... So you got your coolant temperature we're running at 199. Fans come on at 204. Intake temperature sending unit. Let me get back down there. That 88 degrees right down there, that's the sensor that's in your air cleaner. And uh, your math here, let me switch that to... I guess that's all we're gonna get is... Can we get load? We don't want load. Intake, ambient, catalyst. Hold on a second. Timing, coolant. Oh, here we go. O2 sensor, that's what I was looking for. So you want to just take and make sure your O2 sensor sweeps. And that's the that's the really important for good gas mileage. We block the sun out that's behind me. Parked in the worst spot. But you can see that all that's all it does is it pushes from rich to lean, rich to lean. And you'll see in a second it's gonna push back up to rich. And this is reading really slow because of the data. It's really doing this a lot faster. But just seeing that it's doing it, that tells you right there that you've got a, no, a good O2 sensor. That's all you need to know, is it just goes all the way lean, all the way rich, or most of the way. I mean, you can kind of see that balance right there. And uh, yeah, that's a, a, a lot of good, uh, a lot of good information and even if you don't know you know you everybody's not a diagnostic technician so if you don't even if you don't understand the stuff when the car's running good and you've got this thrown up here like this I have a phone cover thing here and it just happens to wedge itself in really nicely here so it just sits there when I'm driving a metro the, uh, but when you're just watching it you know you just get used to what it's what it normally says so when it says something different and then of course if something happens I should take these gloves off because my hands are going to be all sweaty underneath. Um, let me see if I can... I need to get triggered here. No, I need my finger to push that button. Hold on. I tighten the tip up on my finger or my glove. Hold on. I know there's another way to do it here. We just hit main menu. And then we're going to go to diagnostics. So now like on this car, I was just down at the emission center on it. If you ever go through the emission center and you think you can just reset the check engine light and the uh, and sneak through, the reason you can't is because what you have is readiness monitors. So let me in there. And on the readiness monitors, I'll bring them up. Gosh darn it. You probably get dizzy watching this video. But as you can see, it monitors for misfire fuel system, uh, comprehensive components. Let me uh, go up in here. The yellow stuff, it's not, it doesn't look for because it's not in this car. This car doesn't have those, uh, like reserve monitoring. Um, it's checked the catalyst to make sure it's efficient. You see the green there. And we come all, there's only seven things in, the, in a late model Geo Metro. The oxygen sensor heater, the oxygen sensor, and the EGR. And it takes about five or 10 minutes. And then down here, here's your chart. So things that are complete are green, incomplete are red, and then uh, yellow. And red would basically tell you that you have a pending code. So your check engine light's not on, but if you had a scan tool in there, it'll say pending code. Um, so this car is all green and good to go because it has no problems at all. And again, yellow means it's not monitored in this car because it doesn't have that system. And then we go in here and we'll check. I'll show you here. You have to apologize. I'm reaching through the steering wheel with this camcorder. So you got engine codes, zero stored, zero pending, and it's green. You can't get all of these up without flipping a code up. And so you can't trick the emission center. Oops, that's not what I wanted though. Hold on. And so when 
ultimately right there. No pending codes, no stored codes. This car will drive right through the emissions tenor, center. And that's why on a late model car, they don't do a test at the tailpipe. They just plug it into the computer because the computer is actually doing an emissions test and they know when everything is correct, there are no issues. The, uh, I thought I'd just do a little heads up on that since I had the camera out and I'm driving this car around. The, uh, and then like in here, for instance, then you've got, well, this was done yesterday or a couple of days ago. Yeah, on the 24th, maybe it was three or four days ago. Um, oh, right there, pass. The, uh, but it won't pass if you have any pending codes or any of the monitors say that there's any problems. But if you buy one of these da dash command things, I think that dash command app I don't remember what it cost. Maybe it was $20 or $50. And then it comes with that OBD2 plug-in with all these flashing lights down here that look ridiculous. Anyhow, it's just a Bluetooth interface. I'm sorry, it's a Wi-Fi interface. So you just uh, turn your Wi-Fi on and uh, select that uh, unit up and then just open the app up and your car is completely live. And if you have a really late model car, it'll tell you all kinds of neat stuff. And uh, yeah, it's really it's really quite neat. I hope that helps somebody out. The uh, and this is a uh, you know you don't you know I just think that the app for the average person if they want to look at this stuff is going to be a lot simpler than a diagnostic control box. I have a handheld unit, but if somebody hasn't trained you on how to use it, you have to learn the whole interface. This one's really dumbed down and simple, and and it's a lot smaller. You know, I've got a big unit that you hold in your hand. But this is convenient because I can just drive down the road with it on here. And uh, it also checks your speedometer, you know, make sure they got the right speedo gear in it, a tire size. This won't allow you to readjust the speed though. And then it's got all kinds of goofy stuff if you want, you know, skid pad tests and inclination meters and stuff. If like you're going four wheel drive, you know, getting tipped up. And uh, you can type in, you know, the price of fuel. It'll tell you on de while you're driving how much fuel exactly w when you want to get fuel. You know, everything. I'd, probably a, a new GPS system would do if you program that in. But uh, it is dialed right into your car. Uh, hey, anyhow, this video is getting long, and uh, I hope it helps out. And uh, I'll give you that logo one last time if you want to write it down. Oh, see that? This still says 99. So I have a 99 programmed in here, which is the same as a 97. But this is a 97. But Dashcam is the app.